On the 17th of May, 1770, Captain Cook sailed up the eastern coastline of Australia and when he reached the Sunshine Coast, he looked across the land and this is what he saw. He had never seen mountains like it, so he wrote in his journal. These hills lay but a little way inland and not far from each other. They are very remarkable on account of their singular form of elevation, which very much resembles glass houses, which occasioned my giving them that name. The glass houses he was referring to are the glass making kilns that are scattered throughout the countryside of his homeland of Yorkshire. Well, the first Australians, and particularly the Gubby Gubby people, had their own names for these mountains. There is Tibrigargan, Beerwar, Canaran, Gun Gun, Beerburram, Kuchin, Elimba, Tunba Budla, Tibberuakum, Mickelty Bummelgrey, Wild Horse, and last but not least is a small mountain with a big voice, and his name is Cooey. The Aboriginal people have a story that goes with these mountains, and it goes a bit like this. Tibrigargan was the father of all the tribes, and Beor was his wife. They had many children, Canaran being the eldest. One day, Tibrigargan was gazing out to sea, and he noticed a great rising of the waters. He knew that there was a big flood coming, and he became worried for his wife Beor, who had borne him many children and was again pregnant, and would not be able to reach the safety of the mountains in the west without assistance. So he called to his eldest son, Canaran, and told him of the flood that was coming and said, Take your mother Beewa to the mountains while I gather your brothers and sisters. When Tibrigargan looked around to see how Canaran was going with his mother, he couldn't believe his eyes. Canaran had run off on his own to save himself, leaving his mother there all alone to fend for herself. This made Tibrigargan extremely angry. He grabbed his nulla nulla and he chased Canaran and he whacked him on the head so hard he broke his neck. That's how he got his name, Canaran, because Canaran means crook neck. After the floodwaters subsided, the family was able to return to the place where they lived before. When the other children saw Canaran, they teased him and called out, how did you get your funny neck? And this made Canaran feel very ashamed. Canaran went to Tibrigargan to ask for forgiveness. And Tibrigargan said, why did you leave your mother all alone to fend for herself? And Canaran said, well, she's the biggest of us all. She should be able to take care of herself. And Tibrigargan barked back and said, couldn't you see she is pregnant? And it was at that point, Tibrigargan put Canaran behind him and vowed never to look at him again. Even to this day, Tibrigargan gazes far, far out to sea and never looks at Canaran, and he weeps many tears that form a stream that flows all the way to the ocean. Canaran hangs his head in shame and cries, and his tears run off to the sea as well. His mother, Beowal, is still pregnant, for you see, it takes many, many years to give birth to a mountain.